Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a little while since I posted a video and especially on the Retrobat build. Um, as I've been saying before previously, I've been trying to get that build together so you've got a complete build of every single system currently supported by Retrobat and that was the aim originally um, and then obviously it was taking quite a while um, and then obviously in amongst that Retrobat released version 6 as well so basically took a pause and said right let's get, let's get the build done and then just release it in one go. So if you've been following my channel before um, you're pretty familiar with the uh, Retrobat build series, which, like I say, it was kind of building up, doing you know, a video at a time, adding, adding new systems, with the aim of getting to that point where we've got a complete build of every single system. But as I just said, it was taken a while, so, and then obviously version 6 came out. This was based on version 5.3 of Retrobat, although, you know, having said that, a lot of the ROM packs are, are transferable between them. Um, but anyway, so what we've done now is teamed up with some other guys um, under the name of Pixel Nostalgia. You might see that kicking around. That is the team. Um, putting this build together so here it is um, let's go um, back to here so what I've done is just to show about downloading this is one of the key things uh, about it there's so many builds that are just you know huge and you have to download the whole lot it's all, all zipped up massive files and you can't see what's in there until you've actually downloaded the whole thing and unzipped them so I've taken a different approach with this one trying to make this as user friendly as possible as easy as possible and really a build for the community um, so you'll see when you add add the torrent, um, obviously there's two torrents, and we'll get to that as well. There's there's a public torrent which everyone should be able to get hold of. There's also a private one hosted on um, backups.me, which if you've heard of it, you know what it is. It's a, it's a place where you can share this kind of stuff. So there's a, there's a torrent on there as well, but obviously that's private, so you have to be a member of that site to better use that. Um, so I won't go too deep into that, but basically, you know, if you've got access to backups.me already, then you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll be able to find the build on there. If you're, if you haven't, then just use the public torrent. That's fine. They're, they're both exactly identical. Um, so anyway, yeah, when you've added the torrent, um, oh, just to say on the torrents, the links, links for them um, on my Discord site and also my Facebook page. So have a look on there. They'll have the links on how to do it. I may end up putting it in the description here on the on the on the uh, on YouTube if I can do it. In a, in a safe way I'll, I'll add it into the description as well so if, if, if it's not in the description <clears throat> like I say check my discord or Facebook and you'll you'll get the links there so anyway back to this torrent like I say <clears throat> so when you've got it added here's a kind of layout of inside the uh, inside the torrent the base pack you will need that's got retrobat itself the themes all the emulators it is it's quite big it's about 100 gig that's because some of the em emulators hold a lot of some of the game data <clears throat> inside their own own folders so you know, they're not inside the ROMs folder as you normally would, so that's why it's a bit bigger. But yeah, basically, you need the base pack, so leave that ticked. Obviously, this is transmission that I'm showing you here. It's, it should be the same whatever torrent client you're using. You'll have the option to go to the files or the content of the torrent and pick and choose what you download. So, obviously, the, the root one stays ticked anyway by default, but make sure the base pack is ticked. Inside that folder, there's a retrobat.7zip, so yeah, make sure that's ticked. In the root, there's a couple of readme files, and we will we'll see these in a second. Obviously, they're really tiny, so yeah, just leave those ticked. The main thing that I want to show you is there's a ROM packs folder, and you'll notice in amongst here, see this is where the bulk of the size is, just over a terabyte, 1.2 terabytes roughly, is every single system that's in here has its own individual single zip file. So I think, like I say, a lot of builds before where they come out in zip files and there's like 50, 100 part zip files, and you have to down the whole lot before you can extract it. But different approach here, each one in individual zip files, so you can just come down this list and go, okay, yeah, uh, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, and just be selective. And this is, you know, there might be some systems either you don't care about or you've got limited storage. Um, if that's the case, you obviously you can do the same thing here, just be selective with what you want. And then also, if you're only downloading part of it, that's going to download quicker for you rather than trying to download, you know, is it just it's, it's over a terabyte the size, is about, I think, 1.2, something like that, roughly. Um, so yeah, like I say, you can be selective or you can, if you want to, you just tick the whole lot and let, let the whole lot go but yeah that's just kind of like you know so you don't, people don't get scared oh it's, it's huge i'm not going to download that i've got the space or time you can be selective so um so it's, yeah moving on when you've actually got it downloaded what done also done is create a nice handy installer so this is the contents of the torrent once you've downloaded it like i say this is this is like a test build it's like a demo one so the actual files in here are a bit smaller <laughs> just to make this demo quicker um, and then in ROM packs we've only got a couple of 
uh, a couple of ROM packs in there. Like, like I say, you can be selective and just download a couple or download the whole lot. I think there's round about 198, which is just shy of the 200 mark different zip files that you can put in here. And like I say, what we've put together, now what a genius member of the team has put together is this installer. Um, so, um, so like I say, in, in the root you've got the games list, and that is literally just a big long text list of all the games. Let's go off the screen slightly, but you get the idea, you've got all the different systems, all the games inside them, which, you know, could be useful to some people, maybe not to others, even if you want to search and just see if you, your game is in there, a game you want is in there, um, then you can do that. And like I say, that's, um, if you're doing the torrent selected download, you could just add the torrent, tick this file, tick the readme maybe, and click go and just download that. You don't have to wait for the whole torrent to download to wait for the, uh, to have a look at the game list. And obviously the readme is in there as well. I won't go through the whole lot because it's, it's quite big. Um, but it kind of basically uh, covers what I'm saying here around how this is a best of collection. Um, follow suit into my previous previous build on version 5.3 which was the aim to have not every single game from every single system because that just would be huge and obviously in amongst that there's loads of games you've never played never heard of that some are probably rubbish <laughs> um if you're like me you kind of you tend to play your favorites the ones you grew up with the ones you remember having as a kid and that kind of stuff anyway um so all they are kind of explained in here much like the previous build like i said best of collection and then it mentions about the steps so i'm going to show you quickly now how to do how to use the installer to actually extract and i say install but it's you know extract retrobat for you because you know at the end of the day retrobat is self-contained lives in its own folder and we're just extracting it into that folder and then some dependencies to run through um some add-ins or sorry some some applications that the retrobat and some of the emulators rely on so you just install those and then yeah you go through and there's other information i said about here about links to my also youtube channel that we're on discord etc and then just information around the uh, minimum requirements of Retrobat in general. So yeah, that's in, in the root. Um, and then the main thing is this Retrobat setup.exe. And that, obviously, you know, don't worry that it's, you know some random exe you're going to run on your machine. All this exe does is it's a pointer, basically, to a batch file in here, which will use 7-zip to unzip the files for you. That's, that's I, I say it's easy as that. Obviously, they've got their own tits a lot clever than me. But it's, it's fairly, you know, the idea is fairly straightforward. So literally launch, launch the exe. Oh, just gone off screen and then it'll bring up its nice little uh, command prompt so basically that is, this is this will install the retro bat and all the rom packs um minimum 140 gig so that's kind of the base pack um the size it will need when you uh, extract it and then um 1.15 for all the rom packs obviously if you've been selective you won't need that so anyway the first thing it asks you is where you want to put it because like i say retro bat is self-contained so it lives in a folder that you can put Pretty much wherever you want a local hard drive usb drive whatever it might be so we're going to pick a drive letter just you don't have to type anything else literally just the drive letter so i've got an x drive i'm going to use just hit enter and now it, on my x drive it's going to create a folder called retrobat and extract into there which if i have a quick look there you go x retrobat and see it's expanded everything into there and obviously to launch it you do the xe but obviously we'll ignore that for a minute um, now this is the point it says do you want to extract all ROM packs and by all what it means is it'll look inside the ROM packs folder so it'll look inside here and it'll basically extract everything it finds in the demo here I've only got three for speed but obviously you might have a couple more than that a couple less than that or every single one in there depends you know how you downloaded so if you just say yes it's now going to go through and it's found those three found the Mega Drive the NES and SNES and it's extracted all those so again if we have a quick look inside where i've extracted it to inside the rom folder you see it's extracted mega drive and there's you know, there's a single game and the artwork to go with it and it's done the other three as well so just go back a step and now you know it's got the option to launch it for you so it's going to launch the xe at the moment i'll say no so just a reminder you can start it later by running retrobat retrobat.exe uh, and that's it so it's quite quite straightforward but you know, obviously it's clever but it's, it's straight, straightforward um, so if I go back to where I was I'll run that again but show you this selective so run the setup XE again so let's just check when you do things like I've already extracted it there if I do it again um, 
it says it already, already exists, you want to overwrite it, so it does check just in case you've already got retro about installed somewhere else and you accidentally go to overwrite it, it will warn you, which is obviously very handy. So I'm going to say yes and extract it again because I know that's the one I just I just did. Now this time it's asked me do you want to do them all, I'm going to say no. And now it's going to go through and list each one it finds, so it's going, right, I found Mega Drive, do you want this one? Okay, yep, yeah, we'll have that one, thank you. Again, it already exists, you want to overwrite it, yep, yeah, done. Okay, now I found the NES ROM pack, do you want this one? Okay, we'll say no to that one, it'll just skip it. And SNES will, will skip as well. And now do you want to play? No. So, and that's it. And then you close, uh, just confirm that. Although they are doing this because I didn't delete them first. So Mega Drive it was done. So actually, if we delete those out, just for completeness, I'll delete them out just so you can <laughs> see and trust me that it does work. Not that you had any doubt. So run the installer again. Get it into view. Okay, let's do X again. This is why I kept to, uh, we did it with the small files. So it's nice and quick. Also, if you, it's going to take a bit longer, you know, bearing in mind the size of the pack. Right, I don't want to do all of them. I want to do Mega Drive, yes please. Uh, no to that one, no to that one. Do I want to play now? Nope. So, now again, if we look in this folder I've been extracting to, go to ROMs, we've only got Mega Drive. So you can see it's it's, it's really handy, so you can pick and choose. And that, that's the whole idea of the build, make it, more, make it easy and simpler for people to pick and choose what they want. Don't have to download terabytes and terabytes of a massive image contain every single game and then have to extract it all just to maybe get the games you want with this one you'd be selective and like I say the, the idea of this of this build is to be user friendly it's for the community and the idea is um, people can give feedback and say oh you know game XYZ isn't there it's a classic you should have it and then we can do that we can add it in so yeah come chat to us on probably mainly the discord server probably the, probably the easiest place to do people can put comments in, on YouTube but they're kind of as I said before they're hard to track and kind of keep a track of who you reply to, who you haven't. Whereas Discord is much, much easier for that. And obviously the download information is on on uh, Discord as well. And there'll be information of any updates and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's kind of it. Um, like I say, the, there's the torrent up at the moment. Um, be showing the links. Uh, we're trying to get it seeded as much as possible. But obviously in, you know, in the early days, there'll be lots of people trying to download it. So obviously bear, bear with it. Once, once a few of us get it downloaded, and obviously, that's you know the big ask. You know, seed it for as long as, you, as as possible, please. Makes it easier for everyone else. And then once you know more people get it, you know, completely downloaded, they're hopefully a you know, seed, and it'll be quicker for everyone. But obviously, you know, obviously don't need to explain how torrents work. Um, so yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Um, like I say, this has been a, a long time coming. Uh, I've been working on this this build for so long. Like I say, the retro about original build on my channel. You know, uh, the series of videos got to to a certain point. Got a good point. Um, but I just wanted to kind of pause, get it all completely done. And like I say, Retrobat version 6 came out, and obviously while I've been working on it, version 6.1 and now version 6.2 is out. So this is version 6.2, very latest version of Retrobat. Um, and there is actually what I've seen today is as uh, Retrobat team have actually released a sort of a patch version, uh, 6.2.1, I think just to fix a couple of issues. So what we'll do is just, just confirm that works okay with the build, which I'm sure it will. Um, and then I'm pretty sure you can do the update with inside Retrobat itself, but obviously I'll make a quick video on that as well, on how to do it. Um, so yeah, just, just to make sure that works, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and yeah, I think that's about it. Like I say, there's, you know, added it, all the systems. Um, obviously when 6.1 came out and then 6.2 came out, they added some more systems that supported. So it's around about 200 now. Like I say, this build does support every single system. Um, there's a couple that we haven't included. Um, for you know on purpose so it's literally a couple of the pinball games so you've got oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's um, virtual pinball future pinball uh, there's Zachariah pinball there's pinball F pinball FX pinball FX 3 that's in there but what I haven't included is pinball FX 1 and 2 and pinball FX M just felt there was enough pinball already and because you had a there's a good set for pinball FX 3 in there which is you know one of the later versions doesn't really see the benefit of getting a you know pinball FX one and two and M um, that might change in the future you know if people really demand it and, and want them then we can add that as a an add-on pack um, but also yeah I did, we did struggle to find a, a working good pack for those as well so so they've been left off for now so yeah it's every single system 
except a couple. <laughs> but I'm sure you forgive us that. Um, like I say, yeah, every single system's in there. Um, what I'm aiming to do is then make some future videos around Pacific systems. A lot of the systems are quite straightforward in general. You know, the controller mappings on, on the gamepad are just straightforward. You know, things like you know, Meg, you know, Mega Drive and NES that we've got here, then the arcade games are pretty straightforward. But then it's the, mo the older systems, some of the home computer based systems, which kind of use keyboard and there's some mapping files set up, etc. So, but everything should be straightforward and self explanatory. Um, I say once you're actually using the build, um, things like controls and um, what controls do what. Um, it's you know, sometimes a question for people, but the Retro about Wiki, um, if you haven't been there already, Definitely recommend using this. Um, it's just wiki.retrobat.org, and it's got a whole introduction about these, you know, any you know, adding your own games. Because you know, once you've got the build, you can add your own games. You can do what you want, really. Um, we'll add. We're all going to release updates, and keep it fresh, because so many builds just get get to a point in time they get released, and then that's it. You don't hear anything again, and they, you know, eventually they become out of date. Like I say, you know, a good example of of here when I was building the, the original build. It's version 5.3 retro bat and then 6 come out and now we're up to 6.2 already so things are constantly changing and also we're going to try and keep up with that and deliver updates and new versions um, so yeah it's, it's all good but anyway back to here um, what's handy um, on the wiki is on the main page you've got the supported game systems so this is when I talk about all the systems supported they, these are all the systems currently supported by Retrobat and it gives you a big long list, tells you what the default emulator is and a secondary emulator which you can choose. Or is that the wrong way around? That's the name, isn't it? <laughs> so the name that Retrobat sees it as, basically what the ROM folder is called, the full name and then the, the default emulator and alternative emulators. So for any system you can scroll down here and you can click on the on the system, it gives you information about it, gives you a link to the wiki which is quite interesting, it tells you, you know, all the technical stuff about the folder that ROMs live in, what type of file it expects to look for, and then more importantly the controls. So it tells you um, any specific information around controls um, and when adding ROMs. So this is, like I say, the full kind of full information about if you're adding it yourself. Obviously you don't need to. We've done that for you. Um, but I just want to find a good example of one where it gives you, it shows you like the keyboard layout and uh, keyboard mapping. So maybe CPS3. Again, information, possible emulators it can use, but most important thing is things like the uh, keyboard mappings. So it shows you what all the buttons are, what the default mappings are um, uh, with inside Retrobat. So it shows you what the start button is. And uh, all, all the buttons generally you'll see referred to as north, south, east and west. So obviously um, south being the bottom button, and you've got east, got north, and obviously west here. Um, and that's it, yeah. So for controls, like I say, if you're struggling with a particular system, have a quick look here first, because like I say, for most systems, it will tell you what the uh, default keys are um, and tell you what it's expecting. Uh, again, more information here. And again, yeah, see, here's all the controls listed out for, for Dreamcast and what button does what. This one's even got a nice little handy picture. So yeah, I think that's it. I, I wanted to keep this video quite short and sweet. Um, basically, explain the build, say how to install it with the little installer. And like I said, once you've run, once you've run this installer, um, for me, I've put it into Retrobat on my X drive, and there's a Retrobat.exe that creates there. Um, and then if you want to, you can just right click. Um, also, this is Windows 11. If you had Windows 10, you'd see this kind of menu straight up. Um, but anyway, you can send a uh, desktop shortcut, or you can just say create shortcut to Retrobat. So then you've got a shortcut, and then you can copy that or move that to wherever you want on your system. If it's you know to the desktop maybe so it's just quicker to launch but yeah and once you're ready to go just just launch the XC uh, I won't do this one because this is just a uh, um, a test build really it's not really <laughs> it's not the final one um, so anyway yeah so I'll leave that for you obviously got the showcase video that I posted a couple of days ago that shows the actual build in action I you know I don't want to make this sit here going scroll through every single system because <laughs> people just get bored but anyway yeah I think that's it won't ramble on too much longer I promise. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone involved. I know it's been a long time coming, but it's finally here. So, you know, please grab it. Please, you know, see the torrent for as long as you can. Help everyone else out. And yeah, obviously, all feedback welcome. Positive or negative, don't mind. Um, and like I say, best place is probably Discord. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to, to track things in there and, and make sure you reply to people. But for the aim is always to try and reply to every single person. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoy it. 
hopefully um, you have fun. Like once you got the build, you can do what you want with it pretty much. Um, but yeah, just uh, enjoy. Any feedback, let us know, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Back again, sooner than expected. Um, one thing I forgot to uh, quickly go through was the prerequisites. I did mention them um, in the README, but I didn't actually uh, show you quickly how to install it. Again, it's straightforward. There's installers included. So in the Retrobat folder, um, in the root, there's a underscore prerequisites. Uh, and these are basically little um, runtime apps and things like DirectX and little utilities and, and updates that either Retrobat itself needs um, or some of the emulators will need. So, like I say, they're included in here in order, nice, easy to install. Um, if you've had Retrobat before or you've done any kind of gaming on your PC before, you've probably already got these. If you've got a fresh build, you, you may not. Um, but at the end of the day, there's no harm reinstalling them just in case. Um, you can install the same version over the top anyway. So, um, so yeah, nice and easy to go through. Just start at number one. Double click in here. And again, this is the same same thing as the installer. Same idea is you've got an XE here that inside the set folder runs a, a batch file and it'll basically go through and install all these different versions of C++. It's basically where an application like Retrobat is written in C++, it then needs the uh, the runtimes in able to run the application. So I say just double click here. It's just gone off screen a little bit there. That one runs a little script. Now you can't see the other one, but there we go. You basically go through and it'll run all these. Um, anything you might get okay, you might pop up and ask you for permission to install it, which it has just then. I'm not sure whether you can see that or not, but basically, if you can't see it, it's saying, uh, Do you want to allow this app to make changes? You say yes or no. Obviously, you say yes. Just where it needs elevate permissions to, to install. Just say yes to any that pop up. And there's a couple of them. <laughs> Again, I'm not sure you, whether this is capturing on screen. I'll find out later on. But just say yes or allow to. To each of them. So this the C plus plus one is probably one of the big ones just because there's a a fairly large number of them. Just let it run through. And let me install them all for you. Be nearly done. Yeah, I think this is the last one. And that's it. So that's the C stuff done. Go back up a level, go into number two. This is DirectX. Double click the main XE. It will run. Pump me again to install. Say yes. Okay, just going to screen a little bit. Just accept this and click next. Next. Like I say, just to basically work through them in order. Just let it do its thing. Let it finish. Like so, I could just sit here and say, "Yeah, just run through all in order." But I'd like to just to show you what it is. Doken, that's this is um, for one of the Xbox emulators. Basically, helps it support look, um, mounting a, a virtual image. I've already got it installed, um, so it's not going to install it again. But if you if you don't have it, you just click you know, accept the defaults. Just click next, next, finish. Mine's going to want to uninstall because it's already there, but. Yes, I'll cancel that. So I've already got that installed. Direct play. Oh, so this is one where you need to run as admin. So you've got the elevate permissions required. It's quite straightforward. So just right click, run administrator. This is Windows 11. If you've got Windows 10, it'll look more like this when you right click. 
again click run administrator you'll get an elevation prompt to say yes and it'll run through do its business and you're done and then on to the last one some optional packages some uh, .NET framework a couple of different um, utilities which you've probably already got possibly but again just to make sure all the emulators work virtually by itself works everything works smoothly just install these like I say if you already got it it's not an issue it will just either replace it or tell you that it's already got it complete and then the next one on super quick and the very last one so again it's got repair remove I'll just do repair and done so that, that's it that's all the prerequisites done just to make sure that everything's going to work smoothly for your first time um, so yeah <laughs> that should be it now shouldn't have forgotten anything else i um, obviously tagged that one on to the end of the video but yeah so we're all good and uh enjoy and i'll catch you later